Now we are going to discuss about the third mechanism of heat transfer that is radiation. We already learned about conduction and convection and in these two processes it need a medium for heat transfer. Either it is fluid or it may be solid. That means it is a material medium is the reason for the transmission of heat from one place to another place. But in the third mechanism that is the radiation. That is the third mechanism of heat transfer is known as radiation. In radiation there is no medium for heat transfer. There is no medium for heat transfer. An example of the radiation is that is our earth receive energy from the sun through radiation. And we all know that light is an electromagnetic wave. That is electromagnetic wave is the mediator or it is, the it is the transmission medium here. But it is not composed of solid or liquid. But the energy, the energy radiated by, the energy radiated by electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic wave, is called is called radiant energy is called radiant energy and we know that what is an electromagnetic wave here i am drawing an electromagnetic wave and in the x axis it is the propagation vector k in the y-axis, it is electric field vector and the z-axis, it is magnetic field vector. And the electric and the magnetic field are oscillating about this axis. And this is called, they are mutually perpendicular in nature. They are mutually perpendicular. And this is called an electromagnetic wave. Here the radiation come, comes from sun to earth by the oscillation of electromagnetic field. That is electric field and magnetic field. And there is no medium, solid medium or fluid medium for electro transfer of radiation from sun to earth. Earth, that is, our Earth get radiation or heat through the electromagnetic wave. This is one of the important case. Now, next, we are going to discuss about the properties of electromagnetic waves. And we know that electromagnetic wave have different wavelengths have different wavelength and it consists of visible it is it is known as a spectrum it is known as spectrum the spectrum includes different types of electromagnetic waves some of them are x rays gamma rays gamma rays visible rays microwave etc these are the some of the examples of electromagnetic wave and these are these are having different wavelength and it can travel with the speed of light it can travel in vacuum it can travel in vacuum with a speed of with a speed of light the speed of light that is about 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. That is through radiation heat is transferred to the earth from the sun through empty space. 
the electromagnetic radiation emitted by a body by virtue of its temperature is called thermal radiation that is thermal radiation can be defined as the electromagnetic radiation it is an thermal radiation is an electromagnetic radiation emitted by a body emitted by a body by virtue of by virtue of its temperature by virtue of its temperature is called thermal radiation and all body emit thermal radiation all bodies all bodies means solid liquid and gas emit thermal radiation this is one of the important point for example radiation by red hot iron red hot iron now we know that when iron is set into heat we we can see that the iron become red hot or red in color and in that state it emits heat radiation or thermal radiation and and an another example is the light from a filament lamp light from a filament light from a filament lamp is also an example of a example of thermal radiation and when thermal radiation falls on bodies it is partly reflected it is partly reflected and partly absorbed partly reflected and partly absorbed it is one of the property of thermal radiation the amount of heat that a body can absorb by radiation depends on the color of the body the absorption or the absorption or reflection of thermal radiation is depending on the color of the body color of the body for example the black bodies black bodies that is bodies which are in black color absorb and emit radiant energy better than that of lighter colors into the some of the application of thermal radiation in our day to day life first of all we know that we already discussed black bodies absorb more heat from the surrounding so people wear white or people wear white or light colored dresses in summer days that is in summer days people wear white or light colored clothes so that they absorb the least heat from the sun it is one of the example or application of thermal radiation or absorption of thermal radiation by the bodies and while in winter in winter people choose to wear black colored dresses black colored dresses in winter it because it can absorb heat from the sun and keep our body warm then the next application is the bottom of the utensils bottom of utensils cooking utensils are blackened so that they absorb maximum heat from the fire that is bottom of the utensils are blackened blackened because it absorb heat from the maximum heat from the fire and most important is the thermos bottle or thermos bottle or or flask thermo 
or thermo flask is an example of or application of radiation and thermo bottle is an is a device to minimize heat transfer between contents of the bottle and outside and we know that the thermo flask is composed of two layered two layered wall two layered walls that is double walled glass vessel with inner and outer wall coated with silver and in between the wall it is filled with vacuum and radiation from the inner wall is reflected the radiation is reflected and back into the contents of the body because of the reflection property of the thermal radiation the outer wall is similarly reflect back any incoming radiation if any incoming radiation is is outside then it is also reflected back to the inner wall by the second outer wall the space between the wall is evacuated to reduce conduction and convection load so we are preferring vacuum here that is called we are evacuating the space between the walls the flask is supported on an insulator like cork it is it is supported in insulator like cork thus it prevents the heat transfer from the condensed into the space that is the working of thermo settle setting flask or thermos bottle these are one of the major applications of radiation okay radiation is the mechanism of heat transfer that doesn't need a medium to transfer and it it is by the electromagnetic wave the energy is transferred from one place to another place next we are going to discuss a new topic in thermal physics that is newton's law of cooling we already discussed the heat transfer mechanisms that are conduction convection and radiation and here we are going to study the law that defines how cooling takes place we all know that hot water or milk when left on a table begins to cool gradually that means heat energy of the milk is transmitted or transferred into surroundings by the mechanism of conduction or radiation or etc to study how a given body can cool on exchanging heat with its surrounding let us perform the following activity now we are taking some water in a vessel say it is about 300 ml of water and we it is an it is a calorie meter we already discussed what is calorie meter and working of calorie meter in the previous classes take 30 ml of water in a calorie meter and and insert a thermometer here also we are measuring the temperature of the surrounding t1 is the temperature of the surrounding t2 is the temperature of the water and heat the water kept in the calorie meter till the till it attains a temperature 40 degrees celsius above room temperature suppose we have 40 degrees celsius of room temperature then after heating the calorie meter we can say it is about 80 degree celsius then stop heating the water by removing the heat source start the stopwatch and note the reading of the thermometer after fixed interval of time and after every minute we are taking the reading and we are plotting a graph showing cooling of hot water with time this is the time 
and this is the delta T, temperature difference. And we get a graph like this, graph like this. It is an exponential decrease. It is showing an exponential decrease where delta T is the T2 minus T1. That is after a time T, the at the highest temperature, the cooling is very slow. But after a time, it is increasing. From the graph, we will infer how cooling of hot water depends on the difference of its temperature from the top surroundings. We also notice that initially, the rate of cooling is higher and decrease as the temperature of the body falls. At the higher temperature, it is having a higher rate of cooling. But after it is decreasing, the above activities shows that a hot body loses heat into its surrounding in the form of heat radiation. The rate of loss of heat radiation depends on the difference in temperature between the body and the surrounding. Newton was the first to study it in a systematic manner and the relation between the heat lost by the body in a given enclosure and its temperature is given as that is according to Newton's law of cooling the rate of loss of heat the rate of loss of heat it is negative dq by d negative shows that it is the loss of heat it is directly proportional to the temperature difference is the temperature difference delta t is the t2 minus t1 of the body and the surrounding also the loss of heat radiation depends on the nature of the surface of the body and the area of the exposed surface that is we can equate the equation by a letter k into t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 where k is a positive constant depending upon the area and nature of the surface of the body and this is the general equation for the rate of loss of heat by Newton's law of heating. Now, we are going to write in a specific manner. That is, suppose a body is having a mass M and specific heat capacity. This is the mass M and specific heat capacity the specific heat capacity is given as yes and temperature at t2 and temperature at t2 t1 be the temperature of surrounding temperature of surrounding is t1 if the temperature falls by an amount of d2 in dt time then the amount of heat lost is amount of heat lost in terms of the above quantities it is given as m s d t2 d t2 is the amount of temperature difference therefore we can write as dq rate is given by dq by dt which is equal to m s d t2 by dt and we are already have this equation and equating this that is minus m s d t2 by dt is equal to k t2 minus t1 and d t2 by dt that is d t2 divided by t2 minus t1 is equal to minus k divided by ms dt which is equal to capital K dt where capital K is given as 
minus k small k by ms and operating or integrating or integrating we get log e t2 minus t1 is equal to we are taking the minus here so minus capital k t plus c or t2 is equal to taking exponential um, on both side that is t1 plus c dash e raised to minus kt where c dash is the constant. This equation enables us to calculate the time of cooling of body through a particular value of temperature. For small temperature differences, the rate of cooling due to conduction, convection and radiation combined is proportional to the difference in temperature. It is a valid approximation in the transfer of heat from a radiator to a room. The loss of heat through the wall of a room or the cooling of a cup of tea on a table. That is this equation enabled or used in many applications to find the rate of change of energy or cooling of a system using Newton's law of cooling. In this section, we are going to discuss some of the numerical problems in the chapter Thermal Physics. The first question is, when 0.15 kg of ice of 0 degree Celsius mixed with 0 0.30 kg of water at 50 degree Celsius in a container, the resulting temperature is 6.7 degree Celsius. Calculate the heat of fusion of ice. In this problem, we are provided with some details that describes about we are having 0.1 kilogram of ice at 0 degree Celsius. It is then mixed with 0 0.30 kilogram of water. It, this is point into 1.5 kilogram of ice then it is at 50 degrees celsius in a container the resulting temperature the average temperature is 6.7 degrees celsius we have to find the heat of fusion of ice so here we are using the principle of calorimetry that is Heat lost is equal to heat gain. This is the principle we are using here. So, here the water is having the higher degree, that is 50 degree Celsius, and ice is having lower temperature, 0 degree Celsius. So, here heat is lost by the water. So, Heat lost by water is given as MSW. SW is the specific heat capacity of water and we are having that final temperature theta F and initial temperature theta I of water. We are giving the values. So water is having 0 0.30 kilogram into specific heat of water is 14186 then the final temperature is 50 degree celsius minus 6.7 degree celsius that is the initial temperature of water is 50 degree and after mixing it will become 6.7 so it is like this and on substituting these, multiplying these values, we get the answer 54376.14 Joule amount of heat is lost by the water. And we know the heat required to heat required to melt the ice is equal to 
mass of the ice into latent heat of fusion we already discussed about it. latent heat of fusion is the amount of energy absorbed by the system during state change here we are having the mass of the ice is about 0.15 kg and latent heat of fusion this is we have to find in question we have to find the latent heat of fusion of ice so the heat required to raise temperature of ice water temperature of ice water to final temperature it is given as mass of the ice then specific heat capacity of water then final temperature of the system and initial temperature of the system it is for the ice and on substituting these we get 0.15 into 418 final temperature of the system is 6.7 and initial it is 0 degree Celsius after mixing the ice and water it is initially having 0 degree Celsius and finally after mixing it is having 6.7 degree Celsius and calculating this value we get 4206.93 Joule then we have the equation heat lost by the water Heat lost by the water is equal to heat gained by the ice. Gained by ice. Here, ice is having two values. One is the heat required for the state change and then it is for the final temperature. For attaining the final temperature, it is having more heat. So, we have the heat lost by the water. We have the uh, value 54376.14 and heat gained by the system is 0.15 latent heat of fusion plus heat gained during rise in temperature. And on solving this, we get the value 3.34 into 10 raised to 5 joule per kilogram. This is the latent heat of fusion of ice. It is 3.34 into 10 raised to 5 joule per kilogram. Next, we are going to discuss an another problem on the thermal expansion. We already know that the metal expands while heating. This is one of the problem. A blacksmith fixes iron ring on the rim of the wooden wheel of a bullock cart. Diameter of the rim and the iron ring are 5.243 meter and 5.231 meter respectively at 27 degrees Celsius. To what temperature should the ring be heated so as to fit the rim of the wheel? And we are having two rings. One is about a diameter of 5.243 it is made up of wood and another wheel is about it is shorter than that it is about 5.231 this is the wooden wheel and this is made up it is made up of iron iron ring we are seeing that there is a difference in the diameter so it cannot fit into the the iron ring could not fit into the wooden wheel. So we have to expand the iron to certain extent so that it is it will fit into the wooden wheel. So here we are how we have to find what what temperature should be the ring be heated so as it fits the rim of the wheel. So it is given that initial temperature is 27 degrees Celsius and the length of the ring 1 it is equal to 5.231 meter it is the uh, iron ring then for the ring 2 it is a wooden it is about 5.243 meter we have the equation 
L R two is equal to L R one into one plus alpha L T two minus T one. This is the equation of thermal expansion, and alpha is the coefficient coefficient of thermal expansion. And we are having L R one the length or diameter of wooden ring two four P is equal to then five. Point two three one into one plus one point. It is like the coefficient of iron. Coefficient of expansion of iron is alpha is one point two zero into ten raised to minus five. Then the final temperature is T two and initial temperature is twenty seven degree Celsius. And on calculating this, we get final temperature become. Two hundred and eighty degree Celsius. So, this is, at this temperature, the metal ring or the iron ring will fit to the rim of the wheel. Next, we are going to discuss about the thermal conductivity problems. Here, it is given that one of the rod of length twenty centimeter is inserted in a furnace at eight hundred Kelvin. We are having a furnace. At a temperature 800 Kelvin, and we are also having a rod of length 20 centimeter. The side of the rod are covered with an insulating material, and the other end is emits radiation like a black body. One end is inserted into the furnace, and other is radiating emissions into the air. The temperature of this end is about 715 Kelvin. In the steady state, the temperature of the surrounding is 300 Kelvin. Assuming radiation to be only important mode of energy transfer between the surrounding and the open end of the road, find the thermal conductivity of the road. We have to find the thermal conductivity. It is given the Stefan constant, and emissivity is given. So it is given that the Road is radiating energy. So the rate of energy radiated, the rate of energy radiated per second or in unit time. This is given by the equation d q by d t is equal to k a d theta by x and heat flowing through the road per second in steady state. In steady state, the temperature will not raise. So we can write it as d q by d t is equal to a sigma t raised to four minus t zero raised to four. This is the Stefan's law, and we can calculate the value that is left hand side is equal. So we can say that K A d theta by x is equal to A sigma t raised to four minus t zero raised to four, and cancelling the A and for K it is sigma x it is sigma x d theta and T raised to four minus T zero raised to four, and on giving these values, we get six point zero into ten raised to minus eight divided by fifty into point two seven point five raised to four minus three raised to four into ten raised to eight, and we will get the value. Seventy-four watt per meter Kelvin. This is the value of thermal conductivity. The next problem is express a temperature of sixty degree Fahrenheit in degree Celsius and in Kelvin. And we know that there are three types of temperature system. That is Fahrenheit, Kelvin, and degree Celsius. Here it is given the Fahrenheit Tf is equal to 60 degree 
Fahrenheit. And we know the equation Tc is equal to 5 by 9 Tf minus 32. And on substituting this, we get 5 by 9 60 minus 32 which is equal to 15.55 degree Celsius. That is, we are converted Fahrenheit into degree Celsius. Next, we are having the temperature in Kelvin. Temperature in Kelvin is simply, we have to add 273.15 to the degree Celsius. That is, we are having value of Temperature at degree Celsius is 15.55 degree Celsius plus 273.15 and that we get 288.7 Kelvin. Okay, the temperature of an iron piece is heated from 30 degree Celsius to 90 degree Celsius. What is the change in its temperature? On the Fahrenheit scale and on the Kelvin scale. And we are given that the initial temperature is of the iron is 30 degree Celsius and the final is 90 degree Celsius. So the change in temperature, we have to find the change in temperature. So delta T is, is equal to T final minus T initial that is 90 degree minus 30 degree Celsius that is equal to 60 degree Celsius that is we have we are having temperature about delta Tc that is delta Tc is about 60 degree Celsius and we are also having the equation Tf is equal to 9 by 5 delta Tc which is equal to 9 by 5 60 degree Celsius which is equal to 108 degree Fahrenheit and on Kelvin scale delta K is equal to delta Tc is equal to 60 K which means here we are using the change in temperature. So, when initial temperature Ti is equal to 30 degree plus 273.15 and T final is equal to 90 degree plus 273.15. When we take the delta value, that is we are having 90 degree plus 270 3.15 minus minus of 30 degree minus 2 73.1 degree and this will be cancelled and we get 60 Kelvin. So the value of Kelvin is about as, as same as that of degree Celsius. It is given that a gas at 27 degrees Celsius in a cylinder has a volume of 4 liter and pressure 100 Newton per meter square. First question is, gas is first compressed at constant temperature so that pressure is 115 Newton per meter square. Calculate the change in volume. Then it is heated at constant volume so that temperature becomes 1,000 degree Celsius. Calculate the new pressure. And the first question is about the Boyle's law. We know that the Boyle's law is about that is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. General equation is PV is a constant and here we are using P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2 and we have to find and we have, the, we have P1 is equal to 100 Newton per meter square and V1 is equal to 4 liter and 
P2 is about 150 Newton per meter square. We have to find the change in volume. That is the change in volume is V2. From this equation, V2 is equal to P1 V1 divided by P2 which is equal to 100 into 4 divided by 150 which is equal to 2.667 liters. This is the answer of first question. Then we have the second equation that is from Galus law of constant volume that is Galus's law of constant volume that is P2 by P1 is equal to T2 by T1 or we have P2 is equal to T2 by T1 into P1 and which is equal to we have the values 127 plus 273 into P1, 150 divided by 27.27. We have to convert it into Kelvin. When substituting this, we get 200 Newton per meter square. This is the problem from ideal gas equation. We are going to find the heat required to convert 3 kg of ice at minus 12 degrees Celsius kept in a calorimeter to a stream at 100 degrees Celsius at atmosphere. That is, we are having some ice cubes in a vessel, in a calorimeter and it is having minus 12 degrees Celsius. First of all, we have to convert this into ice at 0 degree Celsius. We have to convert this ice at 0 degree Celsius. Then we have to convert this ice into water in 0 degree Celsius. That is here it is state sheets. Here it is changing its state. Then we have to convert 0 degree Celsius water to 100 degree Celsius water and then we have to convert it into 100 degree steam. That is, we have to find the heat required. So, the heat, the total heat required will be equal to the heat required for the 0 degree Celsius. That is, this is the absorbed at this time. It is Q1. Here it is Q2. Q3 and Q4. So, we have to find the total amount of energy. That is Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. Okay, now we are separately finding Q1. Q1 is the heat required to convert ice at minus 12 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. That is, we can write it as Q1 is equal to M S delta T. It is the it is highs here. So, which is equal to we are having 3 kilogram of ice and 3 into we are having specific heat capacity of ice is 2100. That is, into delta T is about final temperature minus initial temperature and on calculating this we get 75600 joule this is the q1 then next is about q2 next is q2 q2 is the amount attained or absorbed in converting 0 degree celsius ice to 0 degree celsius water so here phase change is Happen. So, we have to apply the latent heat of fusion that is L, L of ice that is latent heat of fusion of ice which is equal to 3 into already we have the latent heat fusion of ice is about 3.35 into 10 raised to 5 and we have the answer 5000 joule. We have got 
the Q2 value. Then the Q3 is the heat absorbed to attain 100 degree Celsius from 0 degree Celsius water. And so we have M mass specific heat capacity of water and final temperature minus initial temperature that is 3 into 4186 into 100 which is equal to 55800 joule and next is about conversion this is the state change 100 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius heat he, um, heat for latent heat of vaporization is used here that is it is m l t vaporization that is 3 into 2.256 into 10 raised to 6 which is equal to 6768000 joules and substituting these in the first equation this equation we get q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 which is equal to 700 joule plus q2 is number plus q3 q3 is 55800 plus 676800 joule on adding this we get 9.1 into 10 raised to 6 joule. This is the total amount of energy required for converting minus 12 degrees Celsius ice to 100 degrees Celsius of heat. Team.